Then let's talk about the, the star and planet ID. Often when you go out to shoot a specific star, you may notice that the star is covered by a cloud or just not available because of some kind of occlusion. So you might decide to shoot a different body. Um, the star pilot will identify that body for you uh, after you've taken the site. So if you've taken, so you can do site reductions on bodies that you don't know uh, and then come back and then figure out what that body was. So let's go ahead and uh, see how this function works. Again, for this particular problem, we cited a body at 2107, 26, at um, that specific date in DR time. The bearing to the body was 171. And then the height of I and the index error are as dictated by the problem. And then we go ahead and compute. And we find that nothing was found because of course we needed to enter the altitude and the altitude for this particular body that we were citing, 31.36. And now we say compute ID. And we find that Jupiter was the body that was um, at that particular location when we did the sighting. It also computes, it also displays the computed altitude and the azimuth to that to that body. The final feature that I want to talk about is the um, site planner. I've left this for last because it's the most complex one, but it's also one of the most useful ones. And it's simple, in the simple instance, Site Planner will display a map of the heavens at the specific time and locations you specified. So again, we want to do our site planning at 2107, 26. And when I hit Plot Sky, the Star Pilot will display a picture of the sky. This is a projection on the Earth plane of the different bodies at our specific location. Um, you can tap on the bodies to see what they are, what the computed altitude and the azimuth is to that particular body. So you can go through and tap on these. Like most iPhone applications, you can pinch zoom and pan. Again, so there's Jupiter. You will notice that stars are displayed as black bodies, planets are orange, the moon is gray, and the sun is yellow. Also you'll notice that the size of the dots somewhat reflects the magnitude of the bodies. Larger dots are brighter bodies, smaller dots are less bright. So for example, Alcade here has a magnitude of 1.8, whereas Jupiter has a magnitude of minus 2.4, or quite bright in this particular sky. The site planner will also allow you to find the sky easily at a.m. and p.m. twilights. So if instead of entering the specific time, you enter the, the a.m. twilight and click plot sky, then it'll plot the sky for you at the a.m. twilight. And if you select p.m. and plot sky, it'll go ahead and plot the sky at the p.m. twilight. And you'll notice that this is very similar to the plot that we just plotted at 2107 because 2107 happens to be the PM twilight for this particular day which is why we chose it for our site planning. The list bodies function will go ahead and display the time of the twilight if you're in twilight mode and also display a list of the bodies that are in that particular sky along with their computed altitude and their azimuth. So you can quickly go through, pick the bodies that you want to cite, and know um, the altitudes to set your uh, sextant to before you uh, head on out to do your sites. In addition to plotting the sky and the bodies, the star pilot will also suggest the best bodies to cite. To do that, we need to um, control that with something called control and the input values. Right now that particular feature is disabled so if you click on best sites you will say that there's no sites to display because that particular 
setting is off. Clicking on control will allow you to use stars only or use stars, moons, and planets when making suggestions for your for your sites. When you turn on the uh, control the best sites control and you click on the plot the sky what you're going to observe is you're going to observe um, a grid that is placed on the actual plot suggesting the sites to shoot. Um, in this particular uh, on this particular day, the star pilot found 11 triads that are a good match, and it orders them from pref from best to worst in preference. You can uh, again determine which bodies are being selected by just clicking on the or tapping on the bodies that are at the end of the triad or the grid, and you can move forward between the different grids um, to see what the suggestions are and then select which one. Uh, the grids are weighted and the weight values are displayed under the triad number. So we're looking at triad number 3 of 11. It has a weight of 1.53. And you'll notice that higher weight values are better uh, sites. When going back uh, to the star palette, we can click on best sites. And this will take a minute to compute. But what it will do is it will display the triads for you. So the highest preference triad is number one. Here are the three bodies with the altitudes and the azimuth to those particular bodies. Also the different weighting factors, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. There's, uh, there are weights given for the altitude, the brightness of the star, and the deviation from the grid. And uh, we'll talk about those in a minute. And so here are all our 11 triads in order, and you can go ahead and write those down uh, and use them for your sites when you go out to take your sites.